All right, so for the acoustic guitars, uh, first thing I'm gonna wanna do, uh, I want, since the, this is just a doubled acoustic guitar, it's the exact same performance uh, performed once, and then I performed it again. I tried to get them as close as possible. There, there's a lot of kind of variance in there from just timings and, and everything. Uh, so, so they're not like a perfect double, uh, but little discrepancies whenever you double a part, you wanna play it pretty tight. Little discrepancies help it give it that character. And, and especially if you pan them wide in the stereo field, uh, that's kind of the whole reason to wanna double something like a, like a guitar. Uh, you pan them and you get this kind of super wide kind of guitar sound. And if there are like small timing differences, that's what gives it that personality, a little bit of push and pull from left to right. It just gives it that wide sound. If the performances are too out of uh, lockstep with each other and there's kind of big timing differences between when the, when the accents happen, um, it can be a little distracting because you get, your ear gets pulled too far abruptly one way and the other. It's a little, a little weird. Um, and this is kind of one of those performances to where uh, it's not super tight. And I had, I listened to it since I tracked vocals with the acoustics panned 100% left and right. Uh, yeah, it was a little distracting. So I know that I'm not gonna wanna do this, but I still wanna pan them apart but I also still want to treat them as a whole, as a group. So I'm going to create a new track. I'll scoot it up right above the acoustic and I'll call this acoustic folder. And I'm going to make him a folder and acoustic two will be the last in the folder. So now these two guys belong to the acoustic folder. I'm going to turn the folder all the way down and then I'm going to turn, I'm going to set the two, uh, acoustic parts to unity here. So now I can control their volume uh, just with this fader here. So then we start playing and we'll see how the balance is once I start turning the fader up. And also I'm already starting to kind of realize I got the bass up just a little too high. So I notch down the bass just like a half a dB or a dB for now. I might keep nudging it down. Uh, all right, so on those acoustic guitars, uh, I already know, and again, this is just from experience, and especially with that Behringer uh, C1 microphone, is a very uh, surprisingly flat and linear uh, microphone until it gets into the high frequencies. So at mid and low frequencies, it's really linear. Uh, I play a dreadnought acoustic guitar, which is a large body, just kind of loud bassy instrument. So I know there's going to be a lot of um, overbearing information in that low end of these acoustic guitars. So now that I've got them in a folder, I'm going to treat them as a group and I am going to uh, bring up another EQ. And let's um, have a play here. And we can see. I might want to turn those down a little. Yeah, so there's there's a lot of low end in there. Uh, here, let's solo that. Solo the acoustics and play. So I'm gonna do the same. I'm gonna add a high pass and I'm actually gonna set the minimum frequency maybe to I'll start rolling off at like 120 hmm. all right and before I get too far in these let's uh, go ahead and set the panning I know I don't want them 100% left and right so Let's um, 
tune them to like 75%. Well, I only get even numbers, so. Oh, geez, this pan knob sucks on the fader port. All right, so 76 uh, left for acoustic one, and we'll do 76 right. Uh, for acoustic two, let's hear that. Yeah, you hear it kind of spreads them out. But the timing isn't good enough for them to be spread all the way, but I still want some width to it. I think that panning width will be able to forgive some of the timing differences uh, without making it too distracting. All right, so I've got that high pass filter set at 120. That may be a little, a little high. Let's go to 115. Nope, changed my mind. I want 120. All right. And really, I don't hear anything else in there at this point uh, that needs any sort of drastic EQ or anything. Um, there might be a little bit of mud in that, maybe 200 to you know 350 range, 200 to 400 range. Could probably maybe take a notch out in there somewhere, but really, I, I don't really think it sounds bad enough to have to get fancy with it. The, the natural high-end kind of uh, hump that that microphone has actually complements an acoustic guitar pretty darn well. So it kind of hit this project uh, almost uh, mix-ready, right? So... Let's bring everything else in. Turn the bass down a little more. All right, yeah, hey, honestly, I'm pretty happy with that. Well, I guess that means next we're gonna have to bring in the electric guitars. So there's two electric guitar parts in this and uh, we'll tackle those next.